Gentlemen, Purple Daily, Phil Mackey, Judd Zolgad, Declan Goff. We're going to debut a new segment here that we're going to do every single week on Fridays, Vikings Reddit. We all kind of like scrolling through and seeing what Vikings Reddit is talking about, what sort of questions they're asking, and keep our finger on the pulse. So, Declan, find your favorite question from Vikings Reddit. Throw it at us. Let's do a dive. All right, let's go with this one. Is Daniil Hunter the most underrated player in the NFL? Football. He ranks fifth in total pressure since 2017, trailing only Aaron Donald, Cam Jordan, Vaughn Miller, and Khalil Mack. Wow. Of any of those guys, I guess the first question off this, would you take any of them over Daniil Hunter? Ooh. Gotta look at the ages of the rest of those uh, young men as well. I think Daniil is the youngest yeah. of that group. Cam, Jord- Cam Jordan's 30. I okay. looked that on up. So I would take Daniil. Yep. I think Aaron Donald might He's be. He's older the- for sure. He's older, but he might be the only one I would take. Boy, this He's is 28. Uh, Aaron Donald's 28. I'm going to I'm going to say maybe this is being a homer and a and a hot take artist, but I would take Daniel Hunter specifically because he's only 25 years old. And Daniel Hunter is also the only player to ever reach 50 sacks by the age of 25. And I've got I actually have lists of Daniel Hunter love to throw at you guys here for this, but um and, and part of this too is like Khalil Mack is amazing. We've seen just how much damage he does, not only to the Vikings, but to other teams in the NFC North. But I just keep going back to age. The fact that Daniel Hunter probably gets better going forward and is already one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. It's, it's You watch a guy on a weekly basis, you probably lean toward him, but I'm I'm sticking with Daniel Hunter. To answer question one, um, a, a guy that's had 14 and a half a sacks each of the past two seasons and in 2016 uh, had 12 and a half sacks. No, I don't believe that he is the most underrated player in the league now. I think he's pretty well known. I think we're still working off of the fact that he went from six sacks in 2015 to 12 and a half in 2016 and started to emerge. And at that point, he was probably a guy who was not nearly on teams and fans radar as much as he should have been. So I do think that there there was a time where that question was completely legit. I think he is a well-known commodity now around the the, uh, national football league so i don't think he is the most underrated player as we sit here talking about this today uh but your list i would take i would take daniel he's as phil said he's 25 donald's been around now for how long and he's a great player but he plays inside and here here's the thing that excites me about daniel that he's got going for him that the uh, the other players on your list, Declan, probably don't right now, is the other players on your list still might be very, very good, too great. But I feel like their ceilings are pretty much known. I feel like Khalil Mack, great player, but we know exactly what he can do and the nightmares that he can cause teams. Donald is sort of the same way. Daniil Hunter, boys, with Griffin here until uh, 2020 now, has been a left end. But he could play right end. Yeah. As we saw, and here's here's what intrigues me, and here's why I think that his his upside is still there and has not been explored completely, is think about the Saints game. He suddenly moved inside, and Griffin did too, but they were a nightmare. And in today's league, the multi-positional player, especially defensively, is no question a thing. And so I think what makes me say if you give me the list of players that Declan just did and where do you take Hunter and I say I take him atop that list it's the unknown of a guy who had a relatively he's not super young but he's still young age is maturing into becoming an even better player the unknown about him if I'm the Vikings really excites me to your point about left side right side and then like it it would be fun I've heard a lot of people uh, Vikings fans asking why can't they based on what happened with New Orleans why not do the up the middle thing more often i think they probably will i also think it has to be a bit of a sneak attack from a game plan standpoint to some extent too and you have to i don't think you can just do it liberally i think it has to be immobile quarterback weak potential movable inside offensive lineman right but two years ago his pass rushes daniel hunter were split basically 50 50 between right side and left side and he had the same pressure rate from both the right side and the left side can i can i just shower you guys with some daniel hunter numbers and context here sure just like 
and this is why I actually think he is one of the most underrated players still. He's emerged into that category of people definitely know who he is now around the league. He's not just this anonymous guy anymore because he's been in the league for five years. So right. I don't think he's anonymous by any means. I don't think people understand the trajectory he's on. That's that's the category I would put him in. It's like we all see it in Minnesota. I don't think I don't think people put him in the same category as all the guys Declan mentioned, like the the Aaron Donald. Those those are like household name dudes. Mm-hmm. And then oh yeah, that Daniel Hunter guy is having a pretty good run. Well, I already mentioned that he's the youngest player to ever reach 50 sacks, 25 years old. First player to ever reach 50 sacks at age 25. The last two years. He's third in total sacks across the NFL, 2018-19, behind only Chandler Jones and Aaron Donald. He's second in tackles for loss among edge rushers with 36 the last couple years. Last season, he was number one in the NFL in quarterback hurries. Nobody hurried quarterbacks more often than Daniil Hunter, and he was second in total QB pressures behind behind only uh, Zadarius Smith in Green Bay, who's another guy kind of in that same category. Who are the best pass rushers in the NFL? And Zadarius Smith is not someone that immediately jumps to mind as a household name. But this is the most impressive one to me, all right? This is a list of the most sacks in a player's first five years, regardless of age. Because, like, Reggie White came into the league when he was 23, so he wasn't going to rack up 50 sacks in two years like the Hunter did. But this is the list of the of most sacks in a player's first five years ever in the NFL. He's 14th, and this is the group. Reggie White. J.J. Watt, Derek Thomas, DeMarcus Ware, Richard Dent from those Bears defenses. Yep. And the, the, he was the best pass rusher on, a, on the best defense of all time, basically. Von Miller, Aaron Donald, Jared Allen, Bruce Smith, Dwight Freeney, Charles Haley, Justin Houston, and Tim Harris. Five of those guys are already in the Hall of Fame. I would say three or four are locks to be in the Hall of Fame. And the guys he's ahead of on that list are Khalil Mack, Howie Long, Lawrence Taylor, Julius Peppers, Chris Dolman, John Randall, Kevin Green, who's third all time in sacks. Mm -hmm. That's the company that he's in through five years in the NFL. And so when you put it into that context, yeah, people know who he is, but like, no, 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 like, look at who he is. He's legitimately on pace to be one of the greatest pass rushers of all time. We'll see how the next 10 years or so play out. Like Reggie White did it until he was 38 or something. Right. Bruce Smith was almost 40 years old too, but that's that's the group he's in right now, which and, is crazy. And I think the thing I'm most curious to see now from Hunter in 2020 when the season does start is what's the impact of Griffin being gone from the right end? Does he actually benefit? Because my guess is he's going to play right end and come from a right-hand quarterback's blind side more often. Um, but yeah, I think he is a, I think he's a very known commodity now in the league. Is he accepted as being among the group that you just read, Phil. I don't know about that, but I think that he is, as far as impact now, very well known, a nightmare. Now, the one intriguing thing about Griffin being gone is if the end that he plays with now is not as effective as Griffin was on a uh, regular basis, you know, there were times when Hunter had to be matched up against tight ends, which was a complete and utter joke, and he would just toss those guys aside with no problem. So. All of those things could definitely impact him in 2020, but I still think he's going to be a great player. And athletically, the man is a freak. Right. And I, I mean, you could bring a counterpoint up and say, well, 10 years ago, you know, it's not like Jared Allen had an amazing – Ray Edwards was the the other defensive end. Right. But they also had the Williams wall in the middle that took up all yep. kinds of attention from offensive linemen. It's also just like really nice. If you're a Vikings fan right now and you remember after John Randall retired in the early 2000s, there was a period of, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight years where like there were no pass rushers. Like Lance Johnstone was like the best pass rusher for five specialist. years. The defense coming on third down. The defensive end. So back back in the day, so 20 years, 15 years back, the left end was your base end. So that position was basically a run stopper. Your right end was your star as far as uh, applying pressure on the quarterback's blind side. And if you recall, we went through a period there uh, pre-Jared Allen trade where year after year they kept drafting guys. They drafted Erasmus James, Udeza. To your point, Johnston became a uh, a pass rush specialist yeah. on third down. He was, he was okay. Where there, where there was a long time period, though, where the Vikings basically could not find somebody, just one guy on that entire line. Yeah. And, and the interior of the line was pretty good. It was the outside where they could not find a guy to apply 
uh, pressure, which is why these last, what's it been now, five years or so with uh, Griffin and Hunter has been such a luxury because yeah. now, now you've got two. And the place that the game has definitely changed is your left end now needs to rush as well. That didn't used to really be the yeah. case. And I think I think it's probably I mean, it's it's been five years of luxury of Griffin and and Daniel Hunter, like you said. And and I would even go back to the the period before that where Jared Allen was one of the best, really like one of the top ten or fifteen pass rushers ever. That was a good trade. And don't sell Brian Rob Brian Robinson didn't get home as often as right. Neil Hunter, but Brian Robinson, there was a couple of years where he was top five in pressure rate too, mm-hmm. as one of the more sneaky guys. So it's it, it's been like a ten or twelve year run now of yeah, that position's always just been kind of covered. The other thing you'll notice too, when you look at the top pressure defensive uh, defensive ends and edge rushers in the NFL, a lot of them are first round picks. Like you know, it's not often that you find someone who is that athletic and that fast and just like that quick off the line of scrimmage, who is 260 pounds of two percent body fat. Like you don't find guys that are qualified to get 15 sacks in the third round. And so for the Vikings to have found Daniel Hunter and then Everson Griffin was like a fourth round, fourth pick. round pick too. Yes. To find those guys, John Randall was undrafted. If you go back in Vikings history and like look at some of the top pass rushers uh, and where they found those guys, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible, but yeah, man, like I, I'm looking at right now, 2019 now, JJ Watt, who knows what he's, when, if he comes back like fully healthy at some point, but you look which, right now, which, do, which does not seem to be the case with JJ Watt quite a bit these days. <laughs> right. But you look right now and like there's been kind of a changing of the guard in terms of now that J.J. Watt has been sidelined of who the best pass rushers are. And if you go just based on pressures alone, yep, it's Zadarius Smith, it's Daniil Hunter, it's Cameron Jordan, it's Shaq Barrett, and it's T.J. Watt and Aaron Donald and the Nick Bosa, sixth Von Miller. I mean, like like, there's a couple guys from the old guard there in Von Miller, but it's like two of them are in the NFC North right now in Zadarius Smith. Which is bad news for the Vikings offensive line, (laughs) Phil Mackey. But that's a whole nother episode. It's another episode of Purple Daily. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'm Phil Mackey. That's Judd Zolgad. That's Declan Goff. You can always help us out by giving us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple or wherever you find your podcast. And by clicking that subscribe button on YouTube.com slash Score North.